In this video, I'll show you how to configure IPv6 addresses in four different ways. Let's get to it. So in this scenario, I have two routers, R1 and R2, directly connected. I have not enabled IPv6 unicast routing on either of these two routers. In both router R1 and R2, I don't have IPv6 unicast routing or anything IPv6 related configured. As you can see, if I do show IPv6 interface brief on both router R1 and R2, I don't see any IPv6 addresses. So the first method is to actually simply enable RPv6. So we will enable RPv6 on the interfaces. And the command is RPv6 enable. What will this do is to allow the interface to auto configure itself using a link local RP address. As you can see, now we do have an RPv6 address. And we know it's a link local because it starts with FE80. And in our case here, this is the prefix ID. The remaining part of this RPv6 address, as we can see here, is the host ID or the interface ID. But where is this address coming from? As we will see in a second, this address is actually the MAC address of gigabit 01 with small changes. This is my MAC address for gigabit 01. And this is the prefix ID. The MAC address is 48 bits. So how do we go from 48 bits to 64 bits on this RPv6 address? As you can see here in the middle, we have inserted FF column FE and also 2 on this MAC address has now been flipped and has become 0. So this is in the binary when we're flipping the 7th bit. It all sounds very complicated, but what I will do is to add a link for another video which will explain all this in details, will explain all the theory behind how this addressing works. So let's go back to R2 and we will do exactly the same thing. And we enable RPv6 on the interface. And it's exactly the same here. Let's go and check our MAC address for argument's sake. So as you can see, I've got 243F, 243F on the RP address. 12, I've got my 12. And right in the middle of the MAC address, FF, FE is inserted. And then 52400, the two in binaries has been flipped. The seventh bit has been flipped. So I end up with 5054. Now let's see if I can ping this RP address from router one. With link local RP addresses, we must specify the source physical interface we are pinging from. And here we can see that our ping is successful. The important thing to know about link local RP addresses is that they are just that, they are local. So they are local to the link and they are not routable. So they're not routed anywhere else. They allow you to communicate between two RPv6 hosts on the same link. The second method is to simply assign a global RPv6 unicast address. So now I will add an RPv6 address to gigabit 01. And I will assign this RP address. This RPv6 address is a slash 64, meaning that the first 64 bits 
are the prefix ID and the remaining 64 bits are the host ID. My host ID here is 1. The next method is to use EOI64 for auto configuration. So here we will assign a prefix ID to the interface. So let's hop back into R2 and double check the RPv6 is still the link local RPv6 we had earlier. So as we can see, it's still the link local IP address we had earlier. To configure Gigabit01 to start using RPv6 EOI64, we go under the interface Gigabit01, configure the prefix RPv6 address as a slash 64, and simply add EOI64. So let's check what do we have as an RPv6 address. As we can see here, we have the prefix ID as we have selected. And then we have the host ID, which is essentially, as we saw earlier for the link local address, the MAC address of Gigabit01. So this is exactly as we had earlier. This is this address, FE80 is link local, but this address here is routable. The last method we will see today is SLAC, which stands for Stateless Address Auto Configuration. So the way SLAC will work is that R2 will auto configure its RPv6 address using EUI64, and in addition to that, will have its default gateway, which is R1, link local IP address on Gigabit01. So to demonstrate this, the first thing we need to do, we need to ensure that router 1 actually is an RPv6 router. So we enable unicast routing, and this will allow router 1 to send router advertisements. I will also change the prefix under Gigabit01. And this is purely to illustrate the example. So RPv6 address. Let's change this prefix to C and C for the prefix ID. And let's, for example, make the host ID 10. I mean, in this example, it's irrelevant, but we will just make that change anyway. So now I'll go back to R2. I will remove the EOI64 configuration. and replace it with RPv6 address autoconfig. So this will trigger R2 to start using Slack. So if I do show RPv6 interface brief on router 2, here I can see that I have the RP address, which is the same prefix or which has the same prefix ID as we have seen, as we have configured in router one. And then to check the default gateway, if I do show RPv6 root, I can see that I have a default root here. So this default root column column slash or forward slash zero is the equivalent of the RPv4 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, .0, 0. So what is it pointing at? It's pointing to this link local IP address. Remember that it ends with 50 EC. Let's go and check if that is indeed the RPv6 link local address on router 1. We will just copy it so we can put them side by side. I'll just paste it in here and we can compare it. So as you can see, the default gateway that has been pushed for R2 to use is R1 link local RP address. So this is essentially how Slack works. Not only you get a prefix 
ID to generate your IPv6 address, but you also get a default gateway. I do final tests by pinging R2 IPv6 address from R1. So this is not a link local IP address and therefore there is no need to specify the source physical address. We come to the end of our session. I will put a link in uh, the description for another video where I'm explaining the theory behind this addressing in more details. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them in this section below. And thank you for watching. Thank you.